Hey guys, what's happening? Sometime in the middle of 2020, I created this video, very short, very simple, that I used in promoting Slideshow Like a Pro, my online PowerPoint design training course. And I made that entire video using PowerPoint. Now I used it, I, I used it to promote this course. So it was out there on social media and a couple of people hit me up and asked me is there any way that I could show them how I was able to create this making it look so fluid using PowerPoint now I wanted to make out time to be able to create a little tutorial then because unfortunately at the time I created uh, that video I was I didn't record the screen while I was building it and I came up with the idea that I could do something called behind the slide in other words you get to, to to take a peep at the editing environment of those slides even though they've already been uh, built they've already been assembled but you get to see the back end and that hopefully it will be able to give you guys insights that will help you quickly assemble animations fluid like this so that you can actually create simple short video using PowerPoint all right so let's get into it. Taking a look first of all at each of these uh, slides that I created. I, I hit the first slide because uh, I, you know, I didn't make use of it. Now this is um, the slide where the animation of the logo happens. Um, that's the X-Frame logo right there. And this is the second slide, like the second sequence of the animation. This is the slide that introduces Slideshow like a pro. Um, this is the slide that introduces me. This is the slide that sort of describes what the program is like. Um, sorry. And this is um, the slide that reveals the fact that this video was made using PowerPoint. And this is, of course, the conclusion slide. Now, if I go back, I'll be able to show you what each slide has within it, especially from the perspective of the animation. Now, let me select all of these guys if you look at it you see that they are actually let me zoom in a little bit you see that they are actually separate objects um some of them are actually text objects some are not this creative is a text object i created in powerpoint and this uh, these objects are actually graphics that i imported from uh, an external application also these little parts of the X are also bits and pieces from an external application and the reason I did it like this was that I wanted to make sure that they moved separately because I also needed each of those objects to perform a separate function of its own. Now when I select them and, you, and open the animation pane so that you can see the timeline of the animation that is it. Um, animations tab I go to animation pane and there is my animation timeline. Let me expand it a little bit. Now you may have noticed that I um, the, the animation timeline, I have made it a floating, uh, this panel, animation pane floats. It's my preference. I prefer it to having it docked to the top. When it docks at the top, this is how it looks. I'm not particularly fond of that. Okay, I get this out of there. And if I dock it to the right, this is what it looks like. And sometimes it just isn't convenient for me to work like that. If it's your preference, that is fine. You know, you can always expand it. But I like to have my canvas, you know, my slide as filling up as much of the screen as possible. So I prefer to just float the animation uh, palette like this. Now, these are my animations. They're not looking so good right now. So I'm going to zoom into them. Um, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, so that you can see the, the, the animations themselves on this timeline, so that I can give you a glimpse at what each of those movements actually was. If you look at these objects, um, each of these objects here are the various objects with their animations in that particular slide let me see let me click one of them now let me click this a part of the X now you can see that that these highlighted um, items are the various animations associated with just that object this first animation here is is a fade animation okay this green one is a fade animation so the object actually fades in first and then the next animation here is Okay, I, it's, a, it's, a, it's a path, which means that this is a movement, okay? So it, it fades in here and it makes a movement from this point to this point. And that's the movement with which it comes into the screen. And then at the end of its animation, 
after a couple of seconds it now executes this particular animation which is also um, a fade fade out so it fades in makes that movement and then fades out so let's look at how that goes let me just play that animation for so it's pretty much the same thing that i did for all of them they fade in while they move so um moving on to the next slide now if you see looking at this animation you can see that um i made it such that that orange arrow actually has a role to play in this slide now you can see that the orange arrow comes to the center at the end of that slide that center is where the orange arrow is still is in the next slide so it looks like it's a continuation whereas i actually have two different slides well because the last state of this previous slide is exactly the same as the beginning state of the new slide it just looks seamless okay now looking at the animation pane of this particular slide is of course it's much smaller because it only has um, fewer objects being animated as you can see there's movement for an, an, a movement animation for the arrow um, into the center of the screen and another animation out when it's done and then the, the text box also has its own animation um, this is a fade animation and this also is a movement animation and a fade out so if we play that this slide let's just see what it looks like um, see that very simple very basic so now that's this is watch watch the timeline again this is where they all come in and this is where they go out okay now the next slide is the slideshow like a pro introductory slide now let's look at this you may have noticed okay now you can see the animations from each of the um the timeline showing all the movements of all the objects and as you can see i put a i pulled a little cheap stunt here i created this white rectangle to act as a mask because my at, the, at that time i was really in a hurry and i just wanted to do something quick to cover all that text and reveal it so i just created that rectangle and then created this other blue rectangle um, to accompany it in that movement so it really looks like a nice reveal mask and if you look in here you see all these are all the animations associated with all the objects on this slide and let's see where this falls in this rectangle that's the object right there it's a of course you can see the animation here is a line path so it moves from right to left and also this rectangle makes a similar kind of movement from right to left so um, looking at all the other objects you can see that they all have similar animations fade and movement fade and movement fade and movement okay now looking at this uh, let us play it from this point from the beginning point and let's see how this animation behaves okay take particular note of the um of the of the rectangle that behaves like a mask okay so you see how it reveals oh let me get this out of the way so you see how it reveals the objects there and then each of them makes their own little animation so watch the timeline as well as you're watching the slide and see how everything synchronizes okay you see that all right now so next slide is the slide where um, I introduce uh, myself as the creator of the course. You can see the animations are not that complicated. They're just a few of them, but fluid nonetheless. So let's play from the first one. Um, and as you can see, I actually retained this orange uh, triangle as some kind of um, common element that ties all the slides together so that there's some level, some kind of um, a personality that it brings with it to each of these slides that just ties them together and tells a little story of that the movement of that rectangle because the sorry movement of the triangle so that that, that triangle represents the play button so to speak and it's part of the x-frame logo it's just yeah that's the story that that logo tells so now let's let's uh let's play this animation and see what it looks like there you go Okay, now, you may notice that there are all these objects on this side of the uh, slide, on the outside. And the reason for this is because of the next slide. Let me go, let's, let's close this animation pane, let's go to the next slide. You see that? Let's go to the previous slide and now go to the next slide. You see, what I have done is I have simply shifted all the objects in that particular slide, whether they are on the slide or off the slide and made it, put them in a different position. And what happens is that I used a morph transition in the 
following slide. So what happens is that the, the, the morph transition kind of creates an animation of whatever was in the first slide into whatever is in the next slide. If they are the same object and they simply change position, what the morph transition does for you is that it makes it look like an animation took place from the previous position to the new position. Now let's see how that works out. See, this is slide one and this is slide two, this slide sequence from here. Okay, now the next slide, that's what it is, you see? Let's go back, you see that? So this is what a morph transition does. It allows you to just simply, it allows you to simply arrange objects on your slide to achieve this kind of movement, okay? Now, onto the following slide. Now let's see what the morph transition looks like for this particular one. Where is the transition palette? Okay, let's preview the transition. Now look at that, you see? Let's play that again. Look at that, you see? It's that simple. Now the final slide. And there's no morph transition here. It's a normal cover transition. Now I tried to use that cover transition to create the impression of an actual cover. So I actually put a line. If you zoom, if we zoom in here, we'll see that there is a, a, an object here. That's a rectangle. I put it at the edge of this slide so that when that cover transition takes place, it actually, the viewer actually gets to see the, 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 the transition as a cover sweeping over the previous slide. And let's take a look at how that works. You see, because of that, object that line you actually get to feel that it's a cover animation you don't even realize that it's a transition so these are the little things that if you put them in the right place at the right time flow that sequence in a particular order you can use any animation any transition and make this thing a fluid and beautiful experience and you can tell any story you want to tell let's look at it one more time So that's it guys, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments section and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I will see you in the next one, okay, bye.